Hi guys, uh, today we're going to teach you how to make a canvas from a pair of old jeans and an old frame I had laying around. Now, uh, I've made a bunch of these before. Uh, I actually call them basic britches uh, because I used to start with old uh, girls booty, booty shorts and uh, thought that was the only way to make them, um, you know, redeemable. Um, so <clears throat> this started a once. Um, people throw these out all the time because normally, um, they break the glass on them. And for what we're going to do, we don't need the glass. One thing you will need to make sure is you need to make sure your frame is made of wood. Um, plastic ones won't work for this. They're too fragile. Metal ones won't work for this because they aren't built very sturdy to handle the hammering I'm going to do on them. So the first thing I usually do is stick a staple right on that corner seam just to give it a little bit more stability. Now, this one won't let me really do that on these bottom corners. Yeah, it won't let me because it's got a bevel in there for sliding something into it. But at least I can get a little bit more stability. And then I always like to hammer my staple in all the way so that they sit nice and flush and flat. Now, if I was working on a harder service like a table or a desk, I wouldn't have to hit that that hard. But I'm wearing it on the floor so that I don't damage the frame. So if you do do it on a desk or a table, Put a sheet or something over it so you don't mar up the frame too much. I mean, not that it matters that you mar it up too much. You're about to staple something over it. So we're going to use this frame as the stretcher. Let's cut our material. As I said earlier, I'm going to be using this pair of jeans. So I'm laying the frame on it to kind of figure out roughly where I want and what I want shown. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it at the zipper. I have, make sure you give yourself plenty of extra. Don't cut too short. The good news is if you're going to make a smaller one, you have plenty of extra to play with. I'm going to go right up that seam in the center. Now, when you're cutting it, it works best if you can use one of the previous seams as sort of an edge. These seams on jeans are pretty strong, so they make for some pretty nice clean edges and a nice clean line to cut on. You do not have to cut this perfectly straight. Because you'll see in a minute, we're going to fold the excess into the back. All right. Now, I recommend only doing single ply, but you can do it double ply if you wish. And, of course, jeans aren't the shape of a frame, usually. There's that, that, that. How far down do we need? I'm going to cut it extra. There's that. Let's go ahead and cut the crotch out. so that we can fold it open to one full piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that center seam out and separate these two pieces. Now this one pair of jeans would last me quite a long way. I could do a number of different canvases out of that. All right, a little bit of excess there is fine. I ripped it off. Here's this, tags and pockets and everything. Now, when you're starting this, you always want to make sure you lay down what you want first. Now, this one's going to be a little tighter than I normally do, which means some of the wood might show. Uh, I'm okay with that. If you want it not to show, if you want to completely cover it, cut yourself a bigger piece, which meant I would have had to go over those lines. So, and here's another thing too. You could either fold this around like this, or you can leave it hanging up and flared like it's a real piece of person's jeans. Um, because I'm going to leave it flared up, I like, I'm going to put staples in the front. Some people may not like that. Normally, you put the staples on the top or eat best yet, like in this one, you put them all the way in the back so you can't see them at all. I'm not sure if you can see the staples in that. But this is my only personal preferences. You have a million different ways you can do this. All right. Now, stretch these nice and tight. See? That didn't even stick. That's part of the reason for hammering them in. I'm gonna go ahead and hammer that guy in so he sticks this time. Because I'm gonna stretch it pretty tight across here. Much, much better. 
I like to line up this top line with the edge of the frame on the back. So it has some level of consistency to it. Because these lines tend to bow and shape, you know. Perfect. So you want to get your basic shape down on there first, and then you can kind of stretch it around however you want. So go ahead and get your kind of like your corners on there. Pull it nice and tight. So I'm doing this edge first. This is what I'm going to put along the side here. And it'll hold without me hammering it in. I'll go around later and tap in all those screws. Be a little bit better. Pulling this as tight as I could possibly get it. That one I'm going to want to hammer in. Because I pulled that pretty tight. The zipper on the side might cause you some issues here because I left the zipper in mine on purpose. Now, if I take that zipper out of there, it might fall out. I kind of wanted to leave it hanging out so you can tell it's a zipper, but it probably won't work out too well for me. All right, so I'm pulling it nice and tight. So I got this corner in, this corner in. You can see that staple's there. This staple is right there. And then I did the other corner. That looks like it used to be tapped in a little bit better. Otherwise, that's going to pop right out on me. I still think it might. So one thing you want to try to avoid, because they are going to paint on it, is you want it pretty taut. You don't want as many wrinkles as you can avoid, which is part of the reason I'm pulling from this side and from this side. And I'm going to put in my staple. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some along this edge, although you do have the option of doing this. Let me show you what would happen if you did this. All right, so we're at an edge where we could fold. So you kind of want to do a, you have a few options here. You could do this and you have a puffed up edge, you could fold it in to a triangle here and pull it around. You got more of a tighter edge than like you might have on this. But in my case, a little bit of flare is just fine. So I'm not sure if you can see how I folded that in along the edge because I already know with the size I cut, I'm gonna tap those in. They might not want to do. Make sure when you push, you push down pretty tightly on this when you staple it. If you jump when you staple it, it might not go in all the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. Let's go ahead and tuck that in. You can see I tucked the edge in. Now I'm gonna pull this over. And then one up there. Whoop, out of staples. Always keep extra staples on hand. You always run out of staples at the time you thought you had plenty. Okay. All right. So two staples in there. Look at what we got so far. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna put a few more along here just because I want it to be a little more stable. But you could wrap this around like this, as I said, but I like to keep it flared. So I'm gonna run a couple more staples there. Try to get one in behind that belt loop. Um, because that tends to be one of the places this might sag. See, that staple didn't even go in all the way. Get it on a nice solid surface. That's the ticket. Nope, that one didn't do it. do it. Don't be too discouraged if you miss places with your staples. It's it happens. I've been making lots of these and I still do it. I kind of like the staples as part of the like punk industrial look to this. So I don't mind that they show. But you might be more of a traditionalist and you might want to. 
I ran them along the top. That's because this edge sags the most, so I wanted to make it nice and secure. You can see the pockets floating out out there. You can do whatever you want with that. For now, I'm just going to kind of tuck it behind. Let it, you know what, pull it out or let it, I guess I'll tuck it in there, but that probably means if I put staples in there, that will get the staple on, which is fine. But it's one of the cool things too, is you can hide things in the pocket for whatever you want to uh, paint on. You could hide a phone or something square around in there and then paint around it. And you've got kind of got that pocket filled shape like protruding from there. Um, we could put a something secret letter in there if you wish. Um, you can make it a photo um, board and we can pin photos on with safety pins. It's a good way to reuse like uh, if you have kids, one of their old outfits or their first outfits and you can turn that into a photo board for your kid. Um, so I went ahead and did the top. Let's get these sides secured a little bit better. I'm going to pull them a little tight. Now, this part right here is going to be hard to staple through. It's got that zipper behind it. So you're going to want to be careful and avoid actually stapling on the zipper just because it won't take. Right up to it. That's probably as good as it'll get. And tap those guys in all the way, nice and flush. Um, one of the reasons I tap is if the staple doesn't go in all the way sometimes. That way you can make sure it's held down well. Okay. So got that staple side stapled. On this side with the exposed wood, which as I said, I'm okay with. But I'm pulling it nice and tight in all directions. And, and you can see I'm being a little inconsistent. I'm not spacing them evenly. Um, I don't mind the imperfections. Uh, that's sort of the beauty of this upcycle art. So this guy's done, according to me. Um, it's done whenever you feel like it. I'm even leaving this little tag hanging out. Um, so I'm, I'm making these uh, canvases. It's going to be a twin set, a front and a back, uh, for some artist friends out in Ashtabula, Ohio, uh, Aaron Schinkel of Dream and Design. Um, if you need vinyl cutting work or um, graphic design, he is your man. And he also paints. And another friend of mine, Dean Hayes, um, he is a savant of many different arts, um, not classically trained, but sort of experimentive. And he loves being a uh, like a D and D style DM. Um, not always D and D, but other other versions of RPGs. Um, both very unique fellows. So that one is either going to be Shinkles or I call him Shinkle. His name is Aaron Shinkle because I have three friends named Aaron. Um, and the other one could be for Dean. So here's another wooden frame. Um, this one's got a rounded edge, but it's got nice flat edges along the side. None of that beveled stuff we had. Not this has a bevel there. So we're going to do number two. First things first, reinforcing my corners. Couldn't do all four corners for the same reason I couldn't do all four corners on the other one. So as I said, you ever break a frame around your house, you break the glass out of it and it's wood, hang on to it. Maybe you can make one of these fun things. You can also use old t-shirts for stuff like this too. They're just not as stiff, and I would recommend those you double up. Um, and the fabric is a lot smoother and not quite as stable as something like, like this is canvas. Um, and denim is very similar to canvas. All right, so we've got the other half piece we cut out with the back pocket. This is going to be Dean's. Uh, my most important part for me is the top. So once again, I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to hang it out. You could fold it around. I might choose to do that just to show you a different style on this one. Um, but I'm going to use this uh, tailor line. I guess that's the right word. Sew line. And kind of matched up with the top of this canvas. That is going to be my one guideline to make this straight. It doesn't have to be. You can make this guy all sorts of different ways. Or even like this or however you want it to do it. Um, if you had a longer one, you could do two pockets back to back. And you could have a butt canvas. <laughs> Or uh, in this case, you know, a front butt. So I decided that this is going to be my top line, huh? I'm going to center it on there. 
what I'm going to do. Just going to do my two corners nice and stretched tight. down. Gonna run it straight down. Pull over this edge and this edge. I'm doing it on the outside edges because that's my preference. Tapping the screws. Going a little bit faster than I did with the first one. All right, now this edge this edge is a hard one because it's got a lot of excess material from that belt loop and some other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my best just to get it on there and we will live with the results. Other side. Oh, see, I'm already running into an issue. I pulled it too tight on this side. I could. I'm not going to be able to get it all the way over on this side with the way I pulled it. So we're going to live with that. The other thing is, is I could get a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, pop those out and yank it back the other way more. I'm not that concerned about that. Uh, little heads up there, though. If you are more concerned about that, always do your edges that are gonna be tighter. Like this has a seam line on it. It is gonna be tighter. I'm pulling it really tight. And that's only because I was kind of running out of room. So I flared out, because of the way this guy's going, I'm gonna flare out the edge on here and and somewhat work to hide that edge. As they say in the art world, you, you don't make mistakes. It's happy little accidents, right? It's Bob Ross taught us all. That's not taking at all. few extra because I pulled that one really tight just to get it to hang out there. That edge is not quite as flare as I thought. Wrapping it around a bit more. Now, I'm going to leave it like that. Have it work its way up. Fold it around. I'm going to fold it around just for the sake of this one. Now this is gonna have a, a poofed out corner. In the sewing world, that would be a big no-no. But of course, we're not making a painting, we're making a canvas. And I really like the idea of this belt loop kind of running over the edge here. And that's like a nice little design issue. It's got this cool little line that kind of draws your eyes around and behind. Same with this one. Like in your head, you know what a pair of jeans look like, you know what they're familiar with so that your mind is kind of completing that that's running around, but it almost sort of takes you to behind the painting. My BSing art chat there. Let me go ahead and run one staple in here. And then hold, that, hold that together. Now I got this rough edge on the bottom. You can see it's not straight because a pair of jeans aren't square. You got a square butt, you got bigger issues, I guess. All butts are beautiful. Before somebody gets on me for, more importantly, have fun with this. Do whatever you want. Some excess material here. I could trim it off. It might flop down. You can see that. You can roll it up. I'm gonna go ahead and staple this down. Pulling it nice and tight. Tapping those 
staples nice and flat. Feel that? You hear that? I don't know. A nice taut tandem should sound kind of like a drum when you smack on it. And that's the best. In fact, it's so tight I can barely get my hands in this pocket here. It doesn't necessarily have to be that tight. It's your choice what you do. But a taut canvas is much easier to paint on. It's much closer to trying to draw uh, with a paintbrush than anything else. Um, so why not this guy did this? I'm going to go ahead and roll up this excess here and just tuck it in behind the canvas so it doesn't bother me. And then run a staple in there just to hold it together. That is a personal preference, not a requirement. None of those staples stick. Yeah, it's much harder to try to staple along the around edge. Yeah, I can see why it didn't take. Yeah, there's no way a staple would really hold that. There is a little bevel in here. I can put it along that. But that side of the canvas has got down the edge. Close enough. There you go. Someone's old jeans even got a, a, an old butt stain on it. Um, there you go. So this or this, whichever one is Dean's and whichever one is Aaron's. There you go. Two matching canvases, front and back. And this line even went crooked and I'm okay with it. So I'd love to see what you guys make. Um, you can post comments. Uh, I'm not sure if YouTube lets you post pictures in the comments. If not, you can uh, send them to my Facebook page, uh, Hey Man Productions on Facebook, H-E-Y-M-A-N exclamation point, all in caps, and then the word productions with a capital P and the rest is lowercase, productions. Um, on Facebook, um, you can also email me at kucullin666 at yahoo.com, C-U-C-H-U-L-A-I-N. 666 at yahoo.com. Um, show me your own canvases you made, as I refer to them as basic britches. You may call them whatever you wish. Um, and more importantly, show me what kind of things you paint on it. If you guys enjoy this video, uh, I can give you some more art lessons on making art out of the things just laying around your house.